Yes, uh, this is Rick McMillan, and I'm working on building a computer from scratch using a Thermaltake Chaser Mark I case. I mean, I've just kind of gotten started with it. I'll bring you up to speed to where I am. Uh, here's the case. I've already taken off the top, taken off both side panels. I've already installed the motherboard and the power supply, but that's about it. That's where I'm at right now. Um, the front has removable covers that are filters that filter out dust from the air, which is good because we have cats in our house. It has a little insert for putting in a three and a half inch drive, a small drive. And it has a little tray for that that will fit, which is good because I've already purchased something to go in that slot. I've got a uh, multimedia card reader that should fit right inside there. So I'll be putting that in at some point later. This is the side of the case. I haven't taken the plastic coating off yet. You can see how it looks. It's just two screws on the back. Hold that in. It has a little slot here to hold your headphones. If you like to use headphones when you're using your computer. And it has a uh, has a big area to put a 200 millimeter fan, has a filter to filter out any dust. It has a 200 millimeter fan already installed on the top. It also has one here on the front to cool your hard drives. Your hard drives go in these bays here. You, your uh, other drives, your bigger drives. Go up here, such as your DVD-ROM, CD-ROM, and I plan to mount that right here, probably on the bottom. Tip typically, it goes on the top or the bottom, and I plan to install that there. As I mentioned, all the hard drives will be going here. This is what a hard drive looks like. It'll go on one of these drives. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, I've already installed the motherboard. You can see here, it's a AS Rock, AS Rock uh, Overclock Edition. It is the Z77 OC formula, which is a pretty nice uh, looking motherboard. It is larger than ATX. This case says it only takes ATX. But this is a, uh, I believe it's a server size motherboard, so it's a little bit larger than ATX by about an inch. This direction, and see, you can see I have plenty of room for clearance for the cables to come out the grommets. Uh, so they aren't covered up. I should have plenty of room, so it should work just fine, even though uh, this size wasn't specifically mentioned for this case. But it is a very big case and it fits just fine. Uh, since I've already installed the motherboard and so I can't exactly show you, I don't want to take it out just to show you how I installed it. It's very simple. The case has little screws in it like this that uh, screw into the case where, where they have holes which I don't see any open ones here but it's screw into the uh, middle of the case and then there's room for a screw to fit inside that and these are called standoffs and that keeps the motherboard off of the metal case so that it doesn't short circuit on the back. You can see where the screws are. There's uh, nine of them in this case. Three here, three here, and three at the top that secure it to the case, secure the motherboard to the case. The other thing that goes in, which I haven't showed you, is there's a little a little plate in the back as you can see here that fits right here that is custom to your motherboard so this plate is included with each motherboard that you buy and it fits the back plane of the motherboard you can see here's a typical one and it goes you push it from the inside out and when you insert the motherboard it pushes against it so you install these on the inside and the motherboard push against them. And you can see here, here's another motherboard. 
that's the back plane and you can see here kind of how it fits and it pushes against the case you can see there's a lot of contacts on the back of the case that you don't want to come in contact with metal and that's why they have the little metal standoffs that go through like go through like this also you might notice I have installed the CPU already which is a very minor thing the CPU goes right there there's just a little bar that lifts up this this um, bracket moves up you just drop the CPU in there it's configured to go a certain way it's keyed to go one direction so that you don't put it in the wrong way just make sure there's a little notch on this side of the chip that matches the slot that it goes in the, the uh, socket this is the LGA 1155 socket you want to make sure your motherboard matches the type of processor you got I got the Intel Core i7 LGA 1155 socket it's the i7 3770k the K indicates that you can overclock this processor which I plan to do which is why I want to put in water cooling things I found out about this motherboard is there's a little warning here on these hard drive SATA connectors That's, these are what you plug your hard drives into that indicate that you should use 1 through 5 or 0 through 5 SATA connectors for fast boot up and four of those these black ones are the old SATA 2 connectors which are slower than the new SATA 3 so I only have two of the SATA 3 connectors for boot up and I plan to do a RAID 0 so at least I have two if I was going to do RAID 10 I'd be out of luck for using the new connectors because that requires four hard drives power supply is very simple you just uh, put the bracket slide the bracket here so that it's flat and level across you know, sitting solid and firmly, and and you have two screws on the back to bolt it in. You have a uh, cord that goes here, on and off switch for your computer. So that's where we are. The power supply has been installed. I went ahead and routed the two cables that are not uh, accessory cables through the back and they come out here we're going to plug into the motherboard here and there's another one here so there's two cables uh, this is an 8 pin this is I think a 24 pin I can add accessory cables here for my hard drives to power my hard drives fans and other things and I'll do that later one of the things I did want to mention I have installed the CPU the Intel i7 this one came with a cooling unit a CPU cooler I'm not going to use it, but I just thought you might want to see what it looks like. Uh, it, are, it has thermal paste installed on the bottom. It has a copper heat sink and looks like aluminum fins with a little fan on top. Normally that would go right on top of the CPU to keep it cool. Since I'm planning to overclock this CPU, I'm going to use a Corsair H100i liquid cooler. I've never used a liquid cooler before. This will be the first time for me, so I'm going to have to figure all that out okay uh, now I have the Corsair H100i you see we have a comparison here of the Intel box cooler that's what this is right here which I showed you earlier and the Hydro Series H100i you can see the temperature is 47.9 and this is overclocked at 4.6 gigahertz and you can see the regular fan cooler will not allow you to clock that fast because it will overheat and fail okay and this is the radiator and here's the cooling block it's a nice shiny uh, device pretty big and heavy has a copper plate and it has thermal paste already applied which is nice it has a SATA connector for power it has a three pin uh, connector for um, fan control speed I think Okay, I'm in the process of mounting the fans. I'm, I've decided I'm going to mount the radiator like this in the bottom on the inside. I've uh, 
I'm attaching the fans at this point. It says in the manual there's a arrow on the side of the fan. I didn't find it, but from my experience, I know that typically the supports on the fan, that's the direction the air is flowing, is this direction. And so I'm going to have it mounted this way so that it sucks the air from inside the case and blows it out. Okay, here's the radiator installed. I took off the fan on top and use these four screws right here so I'm also planning to put two 200 millimeter fans up here also sucking so we have a push pull type of arrangement for the radiator for maximum cooling so I'm hoping I can get enough circulation inside the case to where the air inside is not too hot and I'll get good airflow uh, to cool down my CPU Okay, I've replaced the fans on top. I have them in the same orientation as the fans on the radiator below. So we have a push-pull configuration. Now I'm going to put the mounting bracket on the back of the motherboard. You can see this particular case has a cutout for the motherboard so that you can add a mounting bracket for an aftermarket cooler. These adjust to a wide configuration and narrow configuration. Apparently for this case, or for this motherboard, it uses the narrow configuration. So I'm going to just line those up with the holes right there. Then I'll use the uh, standoffs that are for the LGA 1155 and screw them right in and tight. Okay, I'm back. Uh, since uh, last time I spoke to you guys, I hadn't connected to any power cables. Uh, since then, I've gone ahead and routed the 24 pin uh, power cable from the power supply and plugged it into the motherboard. There's also an 8 pin CPU power supply that goes way up here. It's hard to see. I probably should have put that in before I put in the cooler here, but I was able to manage to get to it. Also, the other thing I did is there's a USB cable that plugs into the Corsair uh, water cooler and I've already plugged it into the motherboard the header on the motherboard for USB 2 and routed it through the back of my case to kind of keep the cables neat and have it ready to go up here I've taken the uh, mounting plate the magnetic mounting plate and put it on the Corsair cooler head here uh, it holds on magnetically and I'm going to take off the uh, protective plastic that's on it. And I've got my screws down here. And I'm going to put it on. I'm going to take, uh, before I do that, I'm going to take the little plastic off. And you can see it has thermal plate paste applied to the bottom. So you want to try to get this right the first time. You don't want to have to do it multiple times because it could smear the paste and reduce the effectiveness. We have a power connector and we have a the fan, a three pin fan cable. And and the three pin goes up here. And the USB goes over here. Okay, here are the splitter cables for the fans. I'm going to uh, plug this in at the top. And there she is. It's installed. I still need to connect my fans, but that should happen shortly.